Hi teachers and learners! Good day! I am Mr. Alvin C, one of the EdTech specialists serving you with happiness. In response to the United Nations Declaration of Paris in 2012 about the open educational resources, the Philippines' basic education is ready to fulfill its promise to make learning accessible and give equal opportunity to every Filipino. This is the birth of the DepEd Commons to bridge the gaps of having adequate available resources with the aid of ICT equipment and infrastructure. The DepEd Commons was a flagship project headed by the Undersecretary for Administration, Alain Del B. Pasqua, and Director 4 of the Information and Communication Technology Service, Abram Y.C. Abanil. DepEd Commons serves as an online education delivery platform of the department where learning resources, online review materials, and open educational resources or OERs made by educators are available, easily accessed, and where resources can be modified without having to reprint when such materials necessitate revisions or improvement. In cooperation with the Department of Information and Communication Technology, or DICT, National Telecommunication Commissions, or NTC, SMART, PLDT, and GLOBE, we can use the DepEd Commons for free, even without the data load or credits. It's more convenient to learn and study 24-7 in the comfort of your own home. The interface of the system is simple and yet very direct to immediately show the needed materials which can be downloaded or viewed via a browser. Continuous enhancement and development were catered to showcase the abrupt needs of the end users. With the demands of technology in education, the DepEd Commons became top 4 as the most trending search in Google in year 2020. Aside from that, DepEd Commons rank number one in the most searched topic under the education category in our country in the same year. The DepEd Commons has a total number of 15,190,182 unique users since it was first launched in March 2020. Today, you will see thousands of learning resources in the system to support the blended learning modalities of the department. In addition, the bright future of DepEd Commons will continuously shine as we embark and empower the public school teachers in creating world-class teaching and learning resources such as electronic books or ebooks, digital magazine and worksheets, interactive online games, self-developed Android applications, instructional and tutorial video contents, and other emerging technology tools. As a support system in the online modalities, the use of learning management system is taking into shape. The DepEd LMS is an e-learning platform initiated by the ICTS to help and support the teaching and learning process in the controlled online environment. It was created to work concertedly with the DepEd Commons. Amongst the advantages of using the DepEd LMS are as follows. First, it is cost-effective. The courseware allows participants to access it in their own free time and reduces travel expenses, accommodation costs, and professional fees. Learning while watching the instructional aided materials enhances the soft skills of participants by doing the hands-on activity as requirement. In addition, a digital certificate with QR security code is automatically rewarded to a participant once a certain course is accomplished and completed. Second, consistency of training. The delivery and mastery of competencies is consistent since it is centralized, well-organized, and easy to navigate. It delivers a learning curve to all students by supplying a single source for content, course materials, and instruction with variation of activities that will enhance the skills of end users. Third, it easily tracks learners' progress and performance. 
it has the capability to allow DepEd to easily generate and consolidate training reports in all overall perspective. By utilizing the e-learning courses or online trainings, trainers can easily track goals progress, knowledge gains, and determine who have completed the course or who needs assistance and help. The Department of Education internally developed an in-house learning management system, namely the Professional Development LMS or PDLMS, used for professional growth and capacity building for teacher and non-teaching personnel, which is not limited to public school teachers. It is also available to private school teachers and even college or university professors. On the other hand, the DepEd Regional LMS or DLMS is intended exclusively for public school teachers and students within their regions and divisions to support the blended learning modalities in delivering quality instruction. To learn more and have a field of ease in using this innovative system, kindly visit Commons that deped.gov.ph for deped and commons trainings that deped.gov.ph for deped pd lms and lms that deped.gov.ph for deped regional lms we will continue to innovate and transform the philippine basic education in its target glory para sa bata para sa bayan para sa guru. Solong Idokalidad. Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Madge. Welcome to Itulad, a free online tutorial, an initiative of the Department of Education, Information, and Communications Technology Service. Educational Technology Unit, ICTS EdTech. This program is aimed at helping and assisting learners from kindergarten, senior high school, ALS, alive and sped learners. Aside from answering the modules, the ETULI is offering programs which you will surely look forward to. Together with our parents and teachers, the ETULI will bridge the gaps where difficulty and ease meet in learning new knowledge and skills. So, let us prepare our module, pen and paper. Ready your mind to see and hear worthwhile and interesting lessons. Let us now study and learn, together with our volunteer online tutor. Tara na! Ayan, ag amazing na hapon to all our learners. Teachers and science enthusiasts, ako ang inyong masayahing guro, tutor Ichad mula sa Schools Division of Malabon City. So magandang hapon po sa pagtutok ninyo no, sa ating week 2 ng ating Science 10 online tutorial. So bago ang lahat, uh, shout out muna tayo kay Jamir Lawrence, no, grade 7 student na nunood sa atin. Good afternoon po, watching from Magalang, Pampanga. Sabi ni Doc RJ Calaguas. Hi Doc, thanks for watching. Watching from Maximo Noel Memorial National High School, si Sofia del Castillo. Uh, nandito rin si Ma'am Evelyn Estor Resurrection. Good afternoon po, Ma'am. Watching from Katmon Integrated School, Ma'am Alma Pasyon. Hello, Ma'am Alma. Co-teacher ko yan. So, from uh, si Ma'am Gia Salanio uh, Makasohot. Watching from Polomolok National High School, Polomolok East District. Ayan. So, marami rin nanonood sa atin. Watching from SDO Pangasinan. And from Santa Lucia High School, si Jan Darrell Mendoza. So magandang hapon po ulit sa inyong lahat sa pagtutok. So mamaya na po tayo ulit magbabasa ng ating pong mga shout out. So let's get started po para sa ating uh, session ngayong hapon. Pero bago ang lahat, ayan, si share ko muna ang aking screen. So magandang hapon po ulit. Ako ang inyong tutor, no? si Tutor Ichad. Kasama po natin, syempre, ang ating equally handsome na tutor mula sa SDO Calaocan City, si Tutor Rainier. Hello, Tutor Rainier. Magandang hapon po. Yes, uh, amazing uh, afternoon, Tutor Ichad. 
magandang hapon din. At magandang hapon din po sa ating mga loyal science and learners, uh, teachers, and enthusiasts. So, uh, Tutor Ichad, no? so let me uh, give lang some information po. Uh, kasi kayo naman po ang makisuro this week. So, ang magiging topic ni Tutor Ichad ay may kinalaman din sa mga actually nangyayari ngayon sa ating uh, mundo. Usually, uh, itong uh, pag-uusapan natin ay nangyari na sa, sa China, Tajikistan, and sa iba't ibang parts pa ng mundo. So, let me share lang po yung mga info. So, nung September 13, nagkaroon ng earthquake ng magnitude 4.6 sa uh, uh, Tibet, China. Nagkaroon din ng uh, earthquake sa Tajikistan, magnitude 4.9. At eto lang, nung September uh, 15, ganun din sa mismong Xinjiang, China, nagkaroon din ng magnitude 4.2. So, magandang magandang ngayon at very relative ang ating magiging topic. At si Tutor Ichad po ang uh, magbibigay sa atin ng topic niya. So, good luck. Tutor Ichad, and I hope magiging maganda po ang session natin today. And kita-kita kids po tayo next week. Paalam po. Opo. Thank you, Tutor Rainier. Ayan, makakasama muli natin si Tutor Rainier next week para sa ating session sa Science 10. So ngayon po, ako muna ang ahawak ng ating session. So see you next week, Tutor Rainier. Maraming salamat po. Ingat po and God bless. Ayan. So, bukod po sa information no, na na-share sa atin ni Tutor Rainier, isa rin po sa mga nangyari, no, wala pang uh, nakakaraang dalawang linggo, yung nangyari ulit sa Haiti after 10 years. No, nagkaroon ulit sila ng almost 7 magnitude na uh, lakas ng lindol. So, muli, makakasama po ninyo kami every Monday, 3pm hanggang 3.40 po. Ayan, para sa ating mga science learners na grade 10, kung kayo ay nanonood, i-share nyo naman ang link ng ating a session para sa hapon na ito. So ano bang pag-uusapan natin? Katulad ng mga trivia na nabanggit ni Tutor Rainier kanina at ni Tutor Ichad, pag-uusapan natin ang title ng ating session para sa hapon na to na PS Shaking Lior. So pag-uusapan natin ng earthquake, epicenter, and focus. Ayan. So muli, uh, hi, uh, binibigyan ko kayo ng time no, na makapag- share ng ating uh, session para sa, sa Facebook, sa ating mga classmates at sa inyo pang mga kakilala na grade 10 learners. Ayan. Kung kayo po ay teacher na nanonood ngayon, share naman natin sa ating mga students ang session po natin. So shout out po tayo ulit para sa mga nanonood si Andrea Nicole Gonzalez mula sa Santa Lucia High School. Ayan, may mga taga Santa Lucia National High School si Jan Albert Moronio, si Gia Valentin, grade 10 silver ng Ramon National High School. Maraming salamat sa panonood. So, simulan na natin ang ating session. So, muli, muli po, nagpapasalamat kami sa Central Office ng Department of Education sa pagpapahiram po ng kanilang Quarter 1, Module 2 na uh, SLEM. So, ganun din po sa ating Schools Division Office ng Caloocan City na katulad po ng ginamit last week ni Tutor Rainier, yun pa rin po ang ating gagamitin ngayong hapon. So, bago po yan, shoutout lang po ko sa aming Schools Division Superintendent sa Malabon City. Uh, si Doc, Dr. Mauro C. Degulan, ang amin pong Assistant Schools Division at uh, Division Superintendent, si Dr. Ernest Joseph C. Cabrera, ang akin pong Education Program Supervisor sa Science, si Dr. Manolo C. Davantes, at ang aking principal, syempre, si Dr. Emel Bonsi Mayrina, at ang aking Science Department Head, si Sir Richard S. Galang. So maraming maraming salamat po, syempre, kumayag sila na ako po ay mag-appear din dito sa ating session. Ayan. So, bago po ang lahat, talakayin natin ang ating most essential learning competency para sa linggong ito. Katulad po last week na nabanggit ni Tutor Rainier, tayo po ay may MELC na describe and relate the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts to plate tectonic theory na may code na S10ES-IA-J-36.1. So, ano-ano naman? ang ating mga objectives ngayong hapon na ito. So at the end of this session, no, you will be able to recall the characteristics of seismic waves in terms of speed. Number two, explain triangulation method in locating epicenter of earthquake and plot the active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts in 
in a world map. Okay. So, bago ang lahat, syempre katulad ng lagi nating ginagawa sa, sa kada session na ating uh, tutorial, no? So, meron tayong diagnostic test or tinatawag natin na pre-test. So, ihanda ninyo ang inyong mga papel at panulat. So, pwede rin kayong mag-comment, no? Sa ating comment section ng inyong sagot, letra ng inyong sagot, para malaman natin kung meron na ba kayong alam sa ating mga pag-uusapang aralin ngayong hapon sa Science 10 patungkol sa earthquake epicenter at Focus. So, alam ko, handa na ang lahat. So, bago, bago yan, basahin natin ang ating direction. So, read the questions carefully. Write the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheet. Or pwede po sa ating comment section dito po sa Facebook Live at sa YouTube channel po na pinapanood po natin ngayon. So, bago po tayo mag-start, shout out po tayo ulit. Nanunood po from... Uh, good. Good afternoon watching here from Quirino National High School, si Rhea Mariel Hernandez, uh, Fernandez. Uh, good afternoon po, Johnny P. Serato, Jr., grade 10 silver from Ramon National High School, si Gretchen Ramirez Ayuban. Good afternoon watching from New Canaan Integrated School, Alabel 1, District 1, uh, District Sarangani Division. Wow! So good, good day, I'm Juan Marcel Marie M. Mina watching here from Kirino National High School, SDO Isabela. Hashtag tuloy ang edukasyon. Wow! Thank you sa'yo. Uh, thank you sa ating mga nanunood ngayong hapon. So, tutuloy natin ulit yan maya-maya. So, handa na ba kayo, learners and science enthusiasts na sumagot ng ating diagnostic test ngayong hapon? Sige, tingnan natin. Question number one. So, hindi tayo naghahanap dito, no? Ulitin ko ng tamang sagot. Titignan lang natin kung meron na tayong nalalaman sa ating aralin. Number one, what is the point within the earth where seismic waves originated? Letter A, earthquake. B, epicenter. C, fault. D, focus. Ayan. So, hintay tayo ng sagot. So, habang naghihintay ng sagot, uh, shout out tayo ulit, grade 10 garnet ng GNHS, Irene Medina. Good afternoon watching from Gutad National High School, si Angela Domingo. Ayan, may sagot na si Rainiel. Sabi ni Rainiel Manabat, letter B daw. Uh, ano pa? Letter B, which is epicenter. Sa, uh, Danica De Asis, grade 10 Zara from Makabebe High School. Hello sa mga taga Makabebe High School. Sabi ni Judri Perez Pedrigal, letter D, which is focus. Sabi ni Prud Balansag, letter B. Ayan, so tignan natin ang tamang sagot. Ang tamang sagot ay letter D, focus. Ayan, so pag-aaral natin mamaya. Bakit ba focus at hindi epicenter? Okay. So, thank you sa ating mga sumagot. Question number two para sa ating pre-test. How many seismic stations are needed to locate an earthquake? Letter A, 1. B, 2. 3. Uh, C, 3. Or D, 4. Ayan. Sige, tignan natin ang mga sagot. Sabi ni Sahara, desert. Letter B daw. Sabi ni Atea, Tolentino. Letter B. Kay Talabon. Letter B. At si Joanna Eunice Bibat. Letter B. Ayan. So, tignan natin ang sagot sa question, a uh, pretest question number two. Correct. Letter C. Okay. So, tignan natin mamaya bakit ba kailangan ng tatlong seismic stations para malocate ang isang earthquake. So, shout out muna ako kay Minanunood from Katmon Integrated School. So, Hello sa iyo, Rose Peñalosa, grade 10 Oxford from Katmon Integrated School. Thanks for watching. Ayan, so may mga sadyante tayo mura sa Katmon Integrated School na nanunood. Good afternoon watching from SDO Malolo, si Jody Ann Lopez. Question number three para sa ating pretest. Which type of seismic wave is recorded first in a seismic station? Ayan. So letter A, love wave. B, T wave. C, Rayleigh wave. Or letter D, S wave. Ayan. So ano kaya ang unang nare-record no? sa na seismic wave sa seismic station? Okay, tignan natin ang mga sagot mula kay, uh, kay mula kay Kiana, Tem Templo Nuevo, letter C daw. Kay Judri, letter C. Sabi naman ni Morena Rojas, letter B. At ni Rainiel naman, De Vera, letter P. Uh, P o baka P wave yung sinabi niya. Sabi ni Jonalyn, letter B daw. O Jonalyn Pangilinan. Tignan natin ang tamang sagot. Ang tamang sagot ay letter B, P wave. Okay, very good sa mga nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Pero ito ay diagnostic nga. So titignan natin kung uh, meron na bang alam ang ilan sa inyo. No? Question number four para sa ating pretest. Where is the location of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts? A. In the middle of the plate. B. 
along the edges of the plates. C, in the middle of the continent. Or letter D, along the edges of the continents. Ayan. So, ano kayang tamang sagot? So, shout out tayo kay Rochelle Peralta, grade 10 Sapphire, watching from Alicia Vocational High School. Hello sa'yo, Rochelle. Uh, good day po, watching from GNHS, grade 10 Emerald, Irish Medina. Hello. Ayan. So, tignan natin ang mga sagot. Sabi ni Cecilia Lopez, letter B. Sabi ni Dave, letter B, which is along the edges of the plates. Judri, si Emily, letter B din. Si Rainiel, letter D. Jonalyn, letter B. So, ang tamang sagot sa question number 4 ay letter B, along the edges of the plate. Next, question number 5, ang last question natin para sa ating pretest. So, which of the following method is used to determine the epicenter of an earthquake after or obtaining the distance of at least three different seismic stations? Dumabas na sa letter A, triangulation method. B, structural method. C, analytic method. Or letter D, seismic method. Ayan. So, Leslie Tadifa, grade 10 Emerald from Alicia Vocational High School. Hello, thanks for watching. So, basahin natin ang sagot. Sabi ni Morena Rojas, letter A. Si Rainier, letter A. Si Sir Rainier, hello Sir Rainier, letter A. Irish Medina, letter D. Okay, the correct answer for our last question for pretest is letter A, triangulation method. So, tingin nga, ng, patingin nga ako ng inyong mga score para sa ating diagnostic test or pretest ngayong hapon sa Science 10. Kung anong score, uh, may nakakuha ba ng 5 over 5 or 3 over 5? So, comment ang inyong mga score para sa ating pre-test. So maraming maraming salamat ulit sa lahat ng ating mga learners, no? teachers and science enthusiasts na nanonood sa atin ngayong hapon. So bago yan, sumagot muna tayo ng ating looking back. Okay, so review muna tayo. So ayan, sabi ni Rainiel, siya ay nakakuha ng 4 over 5. So very good. At least, di ba, kahit papano, more than uh, 80% ng ating lesson ay alam na ni Rainiel. Thank you, Rainiel. Ayan, so tignan pa natin si Philip Ray. Mansera ay nakakuha ng 3 over 5. Very good, Mansera uh, Ray. So, punta tayo sa looking back. So, simple lang ang ating direction. Decode the picture equations. Okay, so, meron ako mga ipapakitang picture, tapos i-decode nyo lang siya sa pamamagitan ng mga decoded words na isusulat ninyo sa inyong uh, answer sheets or kung meron kayong papel at panul panulat. So, para at least makita natin kung ano ba yung mga bahagi ng lesson na tinuro sa atin ni Tutor Rainier, Rainier last week, nung week 1, no? Sa ating session ng Science 10. So, handa na ba ang lahat? Alam ko, handa na ang lahat. Ayan, may nakikita pa rin ako nagpo-post ng score. Si Danica, uh, si Jan Albert Moronio, 3 over 5, Santa Lucia National High School. Si Eril Oria Asuncion, 3 over 5. Si Juliana Chris Kirsten Aguilar, 2 over 5. Si Danica ay 3 over 5. So, basa tayo ulit later on. So, let's start with looking back, okay? Our review. Question number one. So, what do you think is the meaning or the decoded word needed to uh, for us to have this kind of looking back, okay? So, ano ba tong number one na to? Sige nga, uh, sa session natin, sagot nga tayo. Ayan, so bago ang lahat, shout out ulit ako. Good afternoon po, Kim Bahar. Ten Nickel from Ramon National High School. Ayan. And, ayan, so may mga scores pa rin. Tignan natin kung may makakakuha ba ng ating uh, decoded word ngayong hapon para sa looping back question number one. Ayan, so hintay lang tayo ng at least isang sagot no, para makita natin. Sige nga, ano kaya yung ating isa sa mga pinag-usapan nung last week no? Uh, na sinasabi na yan ng ating picture sa inyong screen? Ayan. So, ayan, may sagot na si Rainiel. Thank you. Question number one, oceanic plates. Oceanic plates ba? The correct answer is oceanic crust. Okay, so ocean, yung nakikita natin sa picture is ocean plus icy, oceanic plus crustacean. Okay, kaya yung crust. Okay, so tinanggal natin yung minus Asian. Okay, so nawala yung Asian sa crustacean, kaya naging oceanic crust. Okay, isa sa mga pinag-usapan last week, yung oceanic crust, sabi ni Sir Rainier, Oceanic crust is the outermost layer of Earth's lithosphere that is found under the ocean. So ito yung bahagi no ng lupa no, malaking tipak ng lupa ng ating ng lithosphere no na nakikita sa ilalim ng ating karagatan. So maraming salamat sa mga sumasagot. Meron pang chance. Question number 2. Ano kaya to? Ayan. So tignan natin ang sagot. So may nakikita ako diyan parang Africa yan eh no plus AL, plus parang pizza yon tapos may nakatutok na arrow. So, ano kaya yon Ayan. So, tignan natin. 
Shout out muna tayo ulit, Mark Ignacio from Descartes, Great Ten Descartes, ng, ayun na, nawala na siya. Ayan, nang Makabebe High School, ang dami nat, ang daming nanonood ah, from Great uh, from Makabebe High School. Thank you so much. Ayan. And from Nash, uh, Ramon National High School, marami ring nanonood. So eto, may sagot na si Fruit Balansag. Sabi ni Fruit, uh, Continental Crust. Wow, Rainiel Continental Crust. Si JP Lapira Continental Crust. Ang tamang sagot ay very good, it's Continental Crust. Kung meron tayong Oceanic Crust, meron tayo namang tinatawag na Continental Crust. which is also an outermost layer of Earth's lithosphere no? that, make up, that makes up the planet's continent. So ito naman yung bahagi ng mga tipak ng lupa. No? So continental crust naman yan. Okay, very good sa ating mga learners and viewers na nanunood at sumasagot ngayong hapon. Question number three, ano kaya to? No? Ano kaya yan? May parang battery minus IUM plus O plus is, ano yan? Parang bilog na bola, okay? So, tingin tayo ng mga sagot mula sa ating mga learners. Ayan, so may sumasagot pa rin ng Continental Crust. Ayan, hello, watching from uh, Great Tenzara, Makabebe High School, si Diana Marin, hello. Meron din nanonood sa Quintin National High School, si Marites Ramos, hello po. Ayan, may sumagot na. Si, ma'am, sino to? Si Sir Randy De Los Santos, ayan. Uh, lithosphere, okay. So, tama ba? Correct. Lithosphere, that's lithium plus O, uh, minus ium plus O plus is sphere. Okay. So, lithosphere, isa sa mga nabanggit ni Tutor Rainier last week, is also the outer, rigid outer of part of Earth, consisting of the crust and the upper mantle. So, papapansin natin sa larawan, no, na yun yung bahagi ng ating uh, daigdig, no, na nasasakop yung mataas na bahagi ng mantle at yung ating pinaka crust, kung saan tayo nakatayo or uh, located. Okay? Question number four. Ayan, ano kaya yan? May plato plus bola na tumatalbog, minus CE plus dairy. Ayan, so tignan natin. So habang naghihintay tayo ng sagot, uh, shout out tayo ulit. Good day, watching from Quirino National High School, Quirino District, si Hexel Josh Balimbin. Hello, Josh. Thanks for watching. Ayan. May nanunood mula sa Bankero Integrated School si Beverly Ann Kalimag. Thanks for watching, Beverly. Ayan, may sagot na tayo from Emily Bautista. Sabi ni Emily, Plate Boundary. Sabi ni JP Lapira. Uh, sabi ni JP Lapira, Plate Boundary. Ayan, so Plate Boundary ba? Correct. Ang tamang sagot ay Plate Boundary. So very good sa ating mga learners and viewers na sumagot. So mapapansin natin. Ang plate boundary is a crack, no? Ito yung hate or, or gap between two plates. So, mapapansin natin sa picture, na isa rin sa mga tinalakay, no? Yung North American plate at Pacific plate na parehong major plates ay merong nakikita dito, ayan, no? Yung crack or gap. Yung tinatawag na, yan ay tinatawag natin na plate boundary. Okay. So, last question for our looking back. So, ano kaya ito? May nakikita kong parang dagat. Ayan. So, ano kaya yan plus may mic? Plus, meron din akong nakikitang, uh, ano ba to? Parang wave. Ayan. So, ano kaya yan? Dagat yan eh. So, tignan natin kung ano ang mga sagot. Ayan. Uh, sige, hintay tayo ng sagot. Ito, si Sheila May Bustos from uh, Grade 10 Euler. Ayan, Makabebe High School. Thanks for watching. Ayan. So, yun. May sagot na si Sir Randy, no? Si, sabi ni Randy, seismic wave daw. Ayan. Meron ding sagot si Philip Ray Mancera, number 5, seismic wave. So tama ba ang seismic wave? Tama. Ang tamang sagot ay seismic wave. So ang seismic wave naman is an energy release, no, class, during an earthquake. Ayan. So ito yung enerhiya na nare-release kapag nagkakaroon ng earthquake. So maraming nakatanda ng ating mga lesson last week. So nakakatuwa naman. So pag-uusapan natin ngayon, uh, grade 10 learners and science enthusiasts, ang ating... Lesson on earthquake. Okay, so pag-usapan natin, napaka-basic ng earthquake, di ba? It's a sudden movement. So yung hindi nakakaramdam sa atin ng sudden movement na yan or ng mga lindol na mahihina na naramdaman natin nung mga nakaraang buwan lang na nabalita din. So earthquake nga is a sudden is a sudden movement of the Earth's crust. So it travels in the form of seismic waves. So ito yung enerhiya na nagtatravel. So katulad nung looking bar looking back part na sinabi sa atin kanina sa tanong no seismic wave ang ating uh, enerhiya na nare-release kapag nagkakaroon ng lindol 
So tukoy natin, ano ba ang seismic waves? So seismic waves is generated by the movement of tectonic plates. So dahil gumagalaw, no, yung malaking tipak ng lupa na to, nag, uh, na generate, is generated by the movement at na, na, nagkakaroon ng generation ng movement na yan because of tectonic plates dahil sa paggalaw ng ating crust at upper mantle. So may dalawang uri ng seismic waves na pag-aaralan tayo. Una, yung tinatawag natin na body waves at pangalawa naman, yung tinatawag natin na surface waves okay so yung body wave yung surface waves meron siyang dalawang uri yung tinatawag natin na love waves and rayleigh waves so tandaan natin kasi baka pumasok to sa activity natin no so the two types of surface waves are love waves and rayleigh waves so ito yung commonly na nararamdaman natin sa mismong sa ibabaw ng daigdig at uh, bihira doon sa pinagmulan niya sa ilalim ng lupa so tukoy naman natin ano ba yung uh, body wave. So it comes in the form of primary wave or P wave at secondary wave or S wave which travels within the earth no sa loob ng ating daigdig. So surface waves travels on the surface of the earth and it arrives after the body wave. So after noon, tsaka lang natin mararamdaman yung lakas. So mas malakas si S wave. Actually, si S wave kasi kahit na siya yung late na dumating, yung form na yon ay siya yung may pinaka destructive na effect kapag nagkakaroon ng lindol. Yun ay si S wave, okay? So, balik tayo sa part na yun ng earthquake, okay? So, focus naman yung point natin kung saan natin makikita yung uh, naririlis na energy ng earthquake, okay? So, ito yung nakakalito minsan sa pag-aaral ng focus. Nare-relate natin siya sa epicenter, which is the location naman nung lindol sa ibabaw, okay? On the surface of the earth, directly above the focus. So, yun yung question number one natin sa pretest kanina. Kaya medyo parang baka may nalit-nalito tayo na ang term natin na kapag epicenter, yun na agad yung pinagmulan. Pero yung point kung saan na release talaga yung energy na pinagmulan nung earthquake is what we call focus, okay? So sa diagram na ipapakita ko sa inyo, makikita ninyo na yung focus ay nasa ilalim ng ating kalupaan. Yung epicenter ay yung known, des yung known location sa ibabaw ng ating daigdig, okay? Kaya yun lugar, no? So maaaring... Lumindol, for example, nung mga nakaraang buwan sa Kalatagan, sa may Batangas, sa probinsya ng Batangas, ang epicenter ay sa Batangas, pero at sa Kalatagan, Batangas, pero ang kanyang focus ay may lalim na mahigit labing dalawang kilometro. So, maaaring ganun yung kanyang uh, senaryo ng kanyang lindol. Okay? So, ang alam lang natin, nasa Kalatagan yung lindol, yun yung epicenter, pero yung focus ay nasa ilalim ng kalupaan. So, I hope nagigets nyo yung pagkakaiba ng focus at ng epicenter. Okay, so let's continue our lesson on discussing earthquakes. So meron namang device na ginagamit, no? yung tinatawag nating seismometer. Seismograph naman ay yung nagre-record ng motion doon sa ating ground. They are installed in the ground throughout the world and operated as part of a seismographic network. Okay, so ito yung ginagamit natin no? para ginagamit ng ating mga siyentipiko, no? ng mga eksperto natin no? para sa pag-aaral ng uh, seismology at ng volcanology para ma-detect ang mga paggalaw ng ating or motion ng ating lupa okay, ng ating crust and upper mantle. So, yun yung isa sa mga ginagamit ng ating Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX. Okay? So, gumagamit sila ng seismograph para makakuha ng detalye sa paggalaw ng lupa sa daigdig. Next, eto na. The P wave reaches a seismic station first followed by the S wave. So nauuna si P wave na sinusundan ni S wave. Doon nararamdaman natin si P wave, si S wave yung mas destructive sa dalawa. Okay? So tandaan natin na na mas destructive si S wave. To locate the epicenter naman ng earthquake natin, scientists use the difference in the arrival time of the P and S wave to get the distance of the epicenter from the seismic station. So sa mga susunod nating lesson, pag-aaralan natin, paano ba na, na, nakukuha yung difference kapag nag-arrive na si P wave followed by S wave para malaman kung nasaan talaga yung pinaka, uh, kung para malaman natin yung distansya ng epicenter sa mga seismic station. So isa yan sa mga kailangan nating malaman at maintindihan. So mapapansin natin sa diagram, no, great and learners and science enthusiasts, na yung ating P wave and S wave epicenter at uh, S wave ay magkasunod na darating mula doon sa ating lokasyon ng lindol na tinatawag natin na epicenter. Okay. So next, meron naman tinatawag na triangulation method 
which is used to determine the exact location of the epicenter after obtaining the distance of the earthquake from at least ilan? Three different seismic stations or seismic stations. So, class, ha, baka mali to. Baka binabanggit ni Tutor Ichad. Seismic or seismic are both accepted. Okay? So, kung seismic or seismic, pwede yan nating mabasa. Okay? So, triangulation method. Kasi kung magamit dito ng tatlong exact na location na lumindol. So, lumindol sa iba't ibang bahagi na yun at nalalaman ng uh, mga eksperto kung saan talaga nagmula yung pinaka uh, epicenter ng ating lindol. So, earthquake epicenters are scattered everywhere. So, ito na yung in relation no, sa mga bulkan at saka sa mga, mga mountain belts. Kasi pag pinag-aralan natin yung structure mismo ng lithosphere, nalilito tayo kung saan ba talaga matatagpuan yan. Pero merong ibang mga paliwanag, no, katulad nito. Earthquake epicenters, yung mga mismong sentro ng mga lindol, no, are scattered everywhere. Unlike, hindi katulad ng mga active volcanoes at saka mountain belts or mountain range sa Tagalog, ito yung mga bulubundukin or mga hanay ng mga bundok that can only be found along the edges of the plates. So, hindi katulad no, ng mga bulkan, ng mga active na mga bulkan at ng mga mountain belts o mga bulubunduki, no, matatagpuan sa edges sa mga edges ng plates. no May mga earthquake epicenters kasi na distributed sila sa iba't ibang parts. So kahit sa ang part, lumilindol sila dahil may pag, paggalaw ng, ng ating lithosphere. Pero uh, may, mga, may mga pwede tayong matandaan na yung mga earthquake epicenters na to ay kalimitan ding nakikita sa tabi ng mga active volcanoes at major mountain belts. So pag pinag-aral natin yung diagram, no, ng, uh, katulad ng pinakita ni Tutor Rainier nung nakaraan, katulad ng ating uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, kung saan ang ating bansa na Pilipinas ay kabilang. No? May kita natin na meron tayong mga hanay na mga bundok, so check tayo sa mountain range. Check din tayo sa mga active volcanoes, dahil sa Pilipinas ay marami rin tayong mga active volcanoes. Gayun din, yung mga earthquake na nararanasan natin sa ating bansa. ba diba? So meron sa part ng Mindanao sa Davao, meron part sa Batangas, uh, sa Batangas at sa Baguio sa may Luzon, di ba? At sa iba pang bahagi ng ating uh, bansa. So dahil tayo ay bahagi ng uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, nakakaranas tayo ng mga ganyang uh, natural uh, phenomenon. Okay? Katulad ng earthquake. Okay. So ngayon, uh, para mas mabilis tayo, sasagot tayo ng isang activity. So madali lang naman to activity na to. Ang ating objective lang naman sa activity na to ay differentiate the different types of seismic waves. So tignan nga natin kung may natandaan kayo sa ating lesson na uh, pinamagatang no, uh, earthquake, uh, epicenter, and focus. So ang procedure lang natin, maglalabas ako dito ng organizer at magra-write lang kayo o isusulat nyo lang kung ano yung mga information para makomplete natin yung concept about the seismic waves. Okay, so bago ang lahat, shout out muna tayo ulit. Ayan, syempre. Uh, good afternoon, watching from... Ayan, grade 10, St. Simon, Pinagkawitan Integrated National High School, Advisor Maria Teresa Manalo. Thanks for watching. Uh, sino pa ba? Ayan, so good morning. Uh, good afternoon, watching from Raniag High School, si Joanna, Joanna, Joannes. Bikat. So, Macario Molina National High School, si Livia. Thank you, Livia, for watching. Mark Jason Elva, grade 10K ng Santa Lucia National High School. Thank you, Mark, for watching. Ayan. And good afternoon po, watching from Doña Magdalena Gafud High School, si Justin John Rivera mula sa grade 10 Aristotel. Ayan. And kay Tutor Mark, watching from Santa Lucia National... Tutor Marky. Tutor Marky ng ating uh, SDO Bulacan, no? From Santa Lucia National High School. Hello daw sa mga grade 10 Lucians. Ayan. Thanks for sharing, no? The link, Tutor Marky. Ayan. Nanood rin ako kanina ng kanilang session sa grade 8. Ayan. So, ready na ba para sa ating activity na Amazing Waves? Ayan. So, ganito lang. Simple lang. Uh, sulat nyo lang, number 1 at saka number 2 in no particular order. Ano ba yung dalawang types ng seismic waves? Ayan. So, tignan nga natin sa ating comment section. Lagay nyo lang 1 and 2 sa ating comment section. Ano ba yung dalawang uri ng ating seismic or seismic waves? Ayan. So, bago ang lahat, <laughs> shout out muna ako ulit. Watching from Alicia Vocational High School. Ayan. So, si Kathleen Joy Sagnip. Thank you. Watching naman from Ranyag High School. Um, good day. I'm Juan Marcel Marie. M. Mina, still watching here from Quirino National High School, SDO Isabel. Ayan. So, may sagot na si Rainiel. Ayan. So, tignan natin. 
si Rainiel, sabi ni Rainiel, number one, seismic waves, number two, body waves. Ayan, sige nga. Pero ang nakalagay na sa atin kasi is seismic waves. So ano rin dalawang uri niya, o main types niya? Ayan. So tignan natin, may sasagot pa ba? Ayan, sabi rito, uh, sabi ni Irish, P waves and S waves. Ayan. At tignan natin, body waves. Ayan. May nakikita pa ba akong sagot? Primary waves and secondary waves. Ayan, tignan natin. So, ang tamang sagot para sa ating unang main type ay tinatawag na body waves at surface waves. So, ang ating main types ay body waves at surface waves. So, ngayon, para sa question 3 and 4 ng ating activity, ano ba ang subtypes ng body waves? Ano ba ang dalawang subtypes, no? O dalawang uri ng body waves? Tignan nga natin kung ano yung uh, dalawang uh, subtypes ng body waves. Sige, tignan natin. Sabi ni, ayan, thank yous para sa sagot ni Juliana Kirsten Aguilar kanina, body waves and surface waves, very good. Ayan, may sagot din si John Darren Mendoza, primary waves and secondary waves. Uh, hi, good afternoon from, watching from Ranyag High School, grade 10 modesty. Ayan, si Earl, per, uh, John Earl Peralta, thank you for watching Earl. Ayan, sabi ni Rainiel De Vera, P waves and S waves. Ayan, so tama ba ang sagot ng ating mga Learners, correct. Grade uh, grade 10 learners, ang sagot para sa ating subtypes ng body waves ay T waves and S waves. So very good rin. Sila, yung mga nakikita kong sumasagot, si, si Apple Bakayan, si Ashley Malyari, Morena Rojas. Thank you po for watching, ma'am. Uh, hi, good afternoon. I'm Emilio Vingua watching from Ranyag High School. So marami ako nakikita ang taga Ranyag High School. Thank you for watching sa ating mga learners dyan. So, meron pang nanonood. Good afternoon po, watching Shaira Mayjen o Joaquico 10J from Santa Lucia High School. Thank you for watching. Okay, so ano naman yung dalawang uri ng ating surface waves? Ayan, so number 5 and 6, pakisagot naman, learners and viewers para sa hapon na ito. Ayan. So, may nakikita para na akong sagot. Uh, good afternoon po. Ayan na, wala na. Good afternoon po. Blessed. May nakita akong blessed. Uh, Jeliza Joy Aban, Grade 10 Modesty from Ranyag High School. Thank you for watching. Ayan, may sagot tayo, 5 and 6. Si Philip Ray, sabi ni Philip Ray, Mancera, Love Waves and Rayleigh Waves. Sabi ni Joanna, uh, sa number 3 and 4 yun kanina. Ayan, si Claren Panganiban, Love Waves and Rayleigh Waves daw. Okay, so tignan natin ang tamang sagot sa dalawang uri ng surface waves. Learners ay very good. Love Waves and Rayleigh Waves. So patingin naman ako ng score kung ilan na nakakuha ng 6 over 6 para sa ating activity ngayong hapon. Okay, time check tayo. Pero lang tayong dalawang minuto bago ang ating Bago matapos ang ating session. So, nasa huling bahagi na tayo ng ating session. Ready pa rin ba para sa ating post-test? Ayan. So, sagot ulit. Letter lang. Uh, para mabasa ko ang inyong mga sagot dito sa ating mga katanungan. So, congratulations kay Rainiel, 6 over 6, very good. Uh, meron din na ako wa, si Emmy Gawan, 5 over 6, very good, Emmy. And thank you so much. Ayan, si Jade, may sagot ulit siya. Asan pa ba? Yan, si Carol J, Carol C. Pangan, 6 over 6. So, maraming salamat for answering our activity this afternoon. So, punta na tayo sa huling bahagi ng ating a lesson, no? Post-test tayo. Post-test. So, tignan natin kung kayo ba talaga ay merong nakuha, no? Ngayong hapon sa ating session. So, directions ulit. Ganon. Read the questions carefully. Babasahin ni Tutor Ichad. Read the letter of the correct answer on your answer sheets. Okay, question number one. Sige, question number one tayo. Sagot lang, ha? Letter of the correct answer. Question number one. What is needed to determine the distance of the epicenter from a seismic or seismic station? Letter A, the arrival time of P wave and S wave. Letter B, the difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave. Letter C, the arrival time of P wave and S wave from three different seismic stations. Or letter D, the difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave from three different seismic stations. Medyo tricky yung tanong. Ay, yung tanong natin ha. Para sa question number one, tutor each hand. So, para at least makita natin, no, ano ba talaga yung pinaka-best answer? Kasi merong tamang sagot dyan. So, tingin tayo ng sagot. May sagot na si Clark Adolar. Sabi ni Clark, letter A. Si Rainiel, letter C. Okay? Si Dane naman, letter C. 
James Kaones, letter D. Ayan, so marami tayong sagot. Si Philip Ray, letter C. Okay, so tignan natin ang tamang sagot. Ang tamang sagot para sa question number one ay letter B. Tama. So yun yung, ang tanong lang naman natin ay hindi pa yung pinaka-epicenter. Eh. Ang tanong lang naman ay determine the, the distance of the epicenter from the seismic station. So, yun lang tanong. Wala pa yung epicenter. So, ang tamang sagot ay yung difference ng arrival time ni P at saka ni S-Wave. Okay, very good. Sa mga nakatama ng sagot sa letter B para sa question number one. Question number two, Tutor E. Chad. Ito yung tanong. So, what point on the surface of the Earth that lies directly above the origin of the earthquake? Letter A, epicenter. Letter B, focus. Letter C, mountain belt. Or letter D, volcanic arc. Ayan. Medyo kayang-kaya yan ang ating mga learners. So sabi ni Apple, letter B daw, focus. Sige nga. Letter B, sabi ni Ira. Letter B, si Clark. Letter C, si Cyan. Irish, letter A. Ayan. So letter A din si Daniel. Si Dane pala, Dane Gabriel. Hello, thanks for watching, Dane. Ayan, so tignan natin ang sagot. Letter A, epicenter. Kasi ang tanong eh, surface, so nasa taas. That is the epicenter. Yung nasa ilalim na pinagmulan kung saan na-release yung energy for an earthquake is what we call focus. Ayan, so very good sa ating mga learners na nakasagot ng tama. Ayan. So, next, uh, next tayo, next question. Question number three. Para sa ating post test. So what do you call the series of mountains that lie along the same plate boundary? So letter A, epicenter. B, focus. C, mountain belt. D, volcanic arc. Ayan. So what do you call the series of, of mountains that lie along the same plate boundary? Ano ba yan? Okay? Ano ba yung mga uh, series na yan ng mga bundok na yan? So may sagot dito. Uh, tingin tayo ng sagot. Sabi ni... Wala. Yan, number three, sabi ni Philip Ray Mancera, letter C, si Rose Peñalosa mula sa Katmon Integrated School, letter B daw. Uh, may sagot naman si Ray, sabi ni Ray, ang bilis. Wala ako yun, Ray, letter C, Mountain Belt. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C, Mountain Belt. So ayun na nga yung clue natin, di ba? Series of mountains, that is Mountain Belt. So very good para sa mga nakakuha ng tama sa letter C. Question number four. Para sa ating post test. What type of body wave cannot travel through the liquid layer of the earth? Ayan. So, tignan nga natin kung may makakuha. Letter A, P wave. B, seismic wave. C, surface wave. Or D, S wave. Ayan. So, shout out pa rin tayo. Kaya natin to. Sabi ni Kathleen, yes, kaya yan. Sige lang. Para at least, di ba? Pwede natin panuorin ulit yung session na to. Para at least ma mas ma familiarize tayo sa part ng ating week 2 lesson sa science. Hello, Janela Fay Loninia from uh, Grade 10 Jacob mula sa Pinagkawitan Integrated National High School. Ayun ba yung ibig sabihin ng INHS? So, hello. Thanks for watching. So, tingin tayo ng mga sagot. Sabi rito, number 4, sabi ni Philip. Number 4, letter C daw, surface wave. Uh, number 4, letter C, sabi ni Rainiel. May nakita pa ba akong sagot sa question number 4, letter C daw, surface wave. Letter A, P, P wave daw. Okay, letter D, S wave. Okay, so tignan natin kung ano ang tamang sagot. Ang tamang sagot ay D, S wave. S wave. So, ito yung reason no, na hindi siya nakakapag-travel sa liquid layer. Kaya napansin nila na yung ibang part ng ating uh, outer core ay liquid. Okay, so yun yung isa sa mga po pwede nating malaman sa part ng ating lesson na to. So, last question for our post-test. Ayan, so huling question na. So, tignan natin ang inyong mga sagot. So, what is needed kung kanina para malaman yung distance ni epicenter sa mga seismic station? Ito naman question number five. Ano naman yung kailangan to determine the epicenter na okay, of an earthquake? Sige nga. Letter A, the arrival time of P and S wave. Letter B, the distance of the epicenter from a seismic station. Letter C, the difference in the arrival time of P wave and S wave or letter D, the distance of the epicenter from three different seismic stations. Ayan, sige nga. Yan, sabi ni Joanna Yunis, ang galing natin, Kathleen. Ayan, yehey, very good. Ayan, si Mark Edward, tutor each at present. 
Hi, Chuter Mill. Watching and listening from SDO Mabalakat City, Pampanga. Thank you so much for watching. Shooter Meal, maraming maraming salamat. So, tignan natin yung mga sagot. May sagot si uh, Kimberly Letter D, uh, Letter B, si Emily Letter D, si Michelle Letter D, ayan, si Jezreel Letter D. Okay, what's the correct answer? The correct answer is Letter D. Very good. So, may natutunan talaga. To determine the, dist the epicenter of an earthquake, no? We need to know and to determine the distance of the epicenter from three different seismic stations. So, tingin nga ako ng mga score ng ating mga mababait na learners na nakapasok sa ating session ngayong hapon. Sige nga, ilan ang nakakuha ng 5 over 5 para ma-recognize natin ang inyong mga score. Ayan. Thank you so much sa mga sumagot sa atin ng ating mga ayan. So sabi ni Tutor Ranger, basahin ko lang, Mahusay Tutor Richard, very engaging science 10 quarter uh, quarter 1 week 2. Congratulations. So ag amazing Monday afternoon to all. Thank you Tutor Ranger. Ayan. So muli makakasama natin si Tutor Ranger next week. Ayan. So wala na ba? Ayan. Ayan na may nakita na akong mga score. Very good si Michelle 3 over 5, si Apple Bakayan 4 over 5. Si uh, Sierra Benitez, 4 over 5. Si Yan Vax, 4 over 4 daw. 4 over 5. Ayan. Si Judilin, 4 over 5. Ayan. So, ayan. Sabi ni Joanna Bibat, sir, 4 over 5. Yay. Ayan. Congratulations, Joanna. Si Kathleen Joy, Joey Sanip, ay 5 over 5. So, very good sa ating mga learners na nakakuha ng kanilang... Uh, score na 5 over 5, kahit na 3 over 5 yan, okay lang yun. So, practice makes perfect, ba? So, practice natin ulit yung ating part ng lesson para sa earthquake, epicenter, and focus. So, muli, maraming maraming salamat. Ako si Tutor Ichad, kasama ang ating Tutor Rainier. Magbabalik kami next week para sa quarter 1, week 3 ng ating lesson sa Science 10. So, bago ang lahat, magpapasalamat muna ako. Shout out, special shout out kay... Uh, sa ating direct, direct Earl, maraming maraming salamat po mula sa EdTech unit ng ating Department of Education. Thank you, direct Earl, sa iyo pong uh, uh, pag, pag uh, ano, service sa ating uh, program. Uh, shout out po kay Tutor RJ, uh, si Doc RJ mula sa SDO Angeles City, Tutor Leo, SDO Pampanga, Tutor Carl mula sa SDO Olonga po City, at kay Tutor uh, Tutor Jeric mula sa SDO Kabanatuan City, Tutor Mill ng SDO Mabalakat City, Tutor Wax mula sa SDO Olonga po din, Tutor Mel mula sa SDO Palawan, District of Coron. Hi Sir, Sir Mel. At sa akin syempre ang Tutor Mentor, si Sir Rainier mula sa SDO Kaloocan City. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagtutok. So for comments and suggestion po, email nyo po kami sa edtech at depet.gov.ph or iscan nyo po yung QR code na nakikita nyo po sa inyong mga TVs, ah, sa inyong pong mga screen, okay? Kung kayo po ay nanonood sa ating Facebook at sa ating YouTube channel. Susunod na po, safety and first aid kasama ang aming program head sa Science Junior High School, si Tutor Kevin at si Tutor Edson. So, mar muli po maraming salamat. See you po next week. Paalam! Ang husay naman, natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? I-share na yan gamit ang hashtag itulay level up. Huwag aalis ha dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo ring panoorin at salihan dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa itulay!